Hi, I'm Yoni Patterson, as you heard. I am the interim CEO and CFO. Yes, I'm wearing a couple of hats right now. Um, I am from Adverum Biotechnologies, a gene therapy company. And as you've probably heard today, and you're going to see over the next couple of days, it's a really exciting time for gene therapy. And Adverum Biotechnologies is one of those companies. We are advancing in the clinic with a program in A1AT deficiency, and we will have preliminary data at the end of this year. We will also be initiating a wet AMD gene therapy approach with a study in phase one in the fourth quarter of this year. And we are uh, going to go through today some of the advancements that we've made and the details of future um, milestones. Uh, as you know, we're a public company. There will be some forward-looking statements today, and I just want to make sure that uh, you understand the disclaimer associated with those. <clears throat> so we are an industry-leading gene therapy company. We have a robust pipeline that I just talked about. We also have an uh, AV platform and manufacturing scale-up capabilities that we think are industry-leading. We also have a healthy balance sheet with over $235 million. And lastly, we have a team that has uh, deep industry expertise. Moving on to the pipeline, we have a gene therapy approach in approaching, uh, sorry, serious rare and ocular diseases. Our first program is ADVM043 for A1AT deficiency. It's in a phase one study, and as I mentioned, we will have preliminary data expected by the end of this year. And then ADVM022, a wet AMD program, is also going to start a phase one, our plan is to start, initiate a phase one in the fourth quarter of this year. And lastly, we have a program called ADVM053 for hereditary angioedema. And uh, we also have two partnerships. We have partnerships with Editas and a partnership with Regeneron. And that really demonstrates the vector technology capabilities of the company and their uh, desire to be involved with a company who can help them with their ocular disease programs. Now I'm going to go through a little bit more on the details of the programs. So uh, ADVM043, as I mentioned, is designed to treat A1AT deficiency with a single IV administration. The genetic mutation results in very low levels of A1AT, which can lead to premature emphysema and also um, COPD-like symptoms. It's a fairly large market, over 100,000 patients in the US. And there, it's also a well-established market with four products approved uh, with a protein augmentation therapy approach. However, with that, uh, those standard of care products, there is a high burden or treatment burden for patients requiring weekly IV infusions. And that's why we think our approach with, the, with for gene therapy, with a single administration, really offers a lot of opportunity for patients. And we think that there's also ability with the program to dose escalate. Uh, you may have seen some other programs in the past we're addressing A1AT, but our program is a single IV infusion that will, administration that can actually dose escalate. I'm going to go a little bit into the trial design. It's a phase one trial, as I mentioned, with preliminary results by the end of this year with cohorts one through three. We are in the third cohort. We've dosed patients in the first and second cohort. And uh, primary endpoint is safety and tolerability. Secondary endpoint is around total protein levels of A1AT and M protein levels out to 52 weeks. And um, we are looking for patients who present with the phenotype of ZZ or null. Those are the patients that present with the symptoms, as I mentioned earlier, on emphysema. And we're also making sure that these are patients who do not have liver disease. We are not addressing liver disease. And they also have to have no neutralizing antibodies. So as I mentioned before, uh, we will have uh, information on the three cohorts um, by the end of this year. Moving on to our wet AMD program. This is uh, new news in that we have an open IND for um, 022. And we also have fast track designation that we also recently received. You may all know that wet AMD is a very large market, and basically it's caused by, basically the disease is um, neovascularization, and um, it can cause blindness from vision loss for people. And at the, mark, at the moment, there's, it's a very large market with over uh, one million patients in the US and significant revenues with the anti-VEGF standard of care products available on the market. 
However, that standard of care requires that you have to come in either for a uh, every four weeks, every eight weeks, or potentially up to 12 weeks to have an intravitreal injection. We believe that a gene therapy approach, our novel approach, will be uh, certainly very valuable for patients with a single administration. And it's an intravitreal injection, which is the same as standard of care. So patients who would, maybe, who would be coming in for their normal anti-VEGF intravitreal injection would be getting a one-time, potentially one-time intravitreal injection of gene therapy. We have very robust uh, non-human primate data. We have that uh, efficacy out to 13 months. Um, and we also have protein levels out to 52 weeks, beyond 52 weeks actually, post-injection, which really speaks to the durability that we're seeing uh, so far, in, at least in a non-human primate model. And as I mentioned, the single intravitreal injection method of delivery is the same as the standard of care. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the difference between the two approaches for gene therapy right now. Ours is the intravitreal injection, which is basically uh, administered in an outpatient setting. And it's an injection that goes basically into the vitreous, as opposed to subrenal, which you may know of other companies who are pursuing that, which requires surgery which is actually through a subretinal injection. So what are, the, what are the main differences between the two are that with intravitreal injection, it has the potential for a wider distribution of the vector, thus improving its surface area of the retina transduction. And also, as I mentioned, it's an outpatient procedure. As opposed to subretinal, which theoretically is limited by the amount of vector that can be infused in the localized transduction of cells uh, under or near the bleb. The other potential drawbacks of subretinal, as I mentioned, is it's a surgery, and so these are average age of the patient is 80. So you can imagine um, it's not their first choice to be going into surgery, but certainly if it resulted in um, long-term effect, I'm sure there would be acceptance of that, but I still believe an intravitreal approach um, is superior. And also, uh, the surgery technique does have its risks, and uh, as you can imagine, with potentially variability in outcomes. So let's look at the trial design. This is called the OPTIC trial. And uh, basically there are three cohorts, six patients per cohort, and they are monitored over a 24-week period on study. And we actually will be monitoring them actually over two years, but for the actual um, secondary endpoint is over 24 weeks. And basically the primary endpoint is safety and tolerability. Secondary endpoint is BCVA and doing an OCT uh, central retina thickness measurement along with um, rescue injections. So you can see from the study design here, there's a baseline assessment that's done based on their site. What's important is that they have to be responders to the anti-VEGF aflibercept, because aflibercept is the transgene that we're delivering. And so if you know what aflibercept is, that's ILEA, which is one of the um, anti-VEGF products that are approved on the market. So we want to make sure that the patients actually respond to ILEA. And should they do so and they meet the other criteria, we would then be administering a one-time injection and then measuring, uh, as I mentioned before, their uh, efficacy over 24 weeks. We will be pre-treating with steroids. And um, there's a, it's a dose escalation study. And uh, we are really excited about this program, as I mentioned before, having the fast track designation. I think it really speaks to um, the ability of us to demonstrate this is a novel approach, uh, potential, potential success of this approach. Moving on to our third program, which is targeting to prevent HAE attacks. This is a heritage which basically is another genetic mutation, results in low levels of functioning C1 esterase inhibitor. And because of that, if you have that low, those low levels, you can have HAE attacks, which presents itself as um, sudden swelling and edema and also of the airways, of the GI tract and of the extremities and it can be life-threatening. Uh, this is also a well-established market. You're probably familiar with some of the prophylaxis um, treatments that are available. But again, uh, high treatment burden requiring ongoing treatments. And even with those treatments, there's still breakthrough attacks that occur. That's why we think that a gene therapy approach of ADVMI53 
can really potential, has the potential to protect from unpredictable and debilitating HAE attacks. And we have robust preclinical uh, model to demonstrate that in an in a, um, animal model. Again, it's a single IV administration with the ability to dose escalate. So where have, we where have we been this year? What have we been doing? There's been a lot going on at Averum. We have, as I mentioned before, we've advanced the A1AT program through the clinic, and we'll be ready to um, give preliminary data at the end of this year. 022, as I mentioned, we had robust preclinical data, which we presented at ASGCT in a poster. And then we have an active IND and fast track designation. HAE, we have received orphan drug designation. And lastly, this one is very exciting for a lot of the internal folks, is that we are building our own manufacturing capabilities because we see that as a strategic advantage in gene therapy to have your own manufacturing. And that uh, will include having a, a scale up to 2,000 litres and also a GMP capable building to produce our own GMP materials. In terms of upcoming milestones, as I mentioned, uh, we'll have preliminary data on our th first three cohorts for the advanced trial. We also will have a poster at ESGCT uh, on preliminary safety data for the advanced study. And for ADVM022, we're going to have more great preclinical data on e at ESGCT on our long-term fibrocept expression levels beyond what I showed you today. And then also we plan to initiate the phase one in this quarter. And lastly, we're in IND enabling studies for 053. That's it. Thank you.